Hey everyone, this is Tab Nation, aka Tom, your boy, and today we're going to be doing a V2 video. I've done a few, but I guess it's about time to teach you how to actually install it as, as of uh, the time of the filming of this video. It is in beta version 7, I want to say. We'll check that here in a second. Uh, and the officially there is or unofficially I mean it is in beta things can always change but there is an actual installer now uh, which is awesome so it's not really uh, officially like out there out there but it's there for beta testing so we're going to show you how to use the installer to install version 2 this is awesome it just makes it so much simpler for everybody it's less confusing you know etc etc so yeah let's show you how to do that so obviously this will be in the description below, the link to this page. Uh, the reason I am linking here to the forms is because there's a lot of information coming out here. It's great to see any changes when they mention anything. Um, but basically you're just gonna click on the little link here in caps, and, or not caps, in bold, underline, blue, yada yada. Auto hockey version two, about and, down, oops, about and downloads. So click that. And you're going to be coming to the AutoHockey website, autohockey.com slash v2. Pretty simple URL there. And, uh, you know, there's some instructions here uh, about, you know, how to do it in case you won't rather read than listen to me uh, chat on. But we're just coming down here to the download section, uh, current beta release. Obviously, there's some other stuff if you want the online documentation. Uh, GitHub, all that kind of stuff. So this might be a good page that you might want to bookmark if you're, you know, just kind of following along uh, and just want to know like all the the big links that you might need. Uh, this is a good page to bookmark. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna do current beta version. Or if you want, obviously, if you want an older version, you can go right here to where it says all V2 releases. Maybe you don't want the newest version because you're worried it might be a little buggy, so you might want more of a stable version you know, you can do that. So, you know, this is pretty straightforward. We're going to get our little explorer here, uh, auto hockey, uh, 2.0 slash. And yeah, it was beta seven. So at the filming of this video, beta seven, obviously when you watch this, it might be like not in 10, a hundred, who knows? So we're going to push save. It is going to be a zip file. So that downloads very quickly. Uh, I mean, I do have fast internet, so it might take a few more seconds for you, but it literally took one second for me. And here it is, auto hockey varies. So let's unzip it. Use whatever method you have here. Obviously, I'm just going to say extract here. Hope he has it in a folder. He does not. Oh my God, why would you do that? All right. Oh boy. When you create a zip file, you should always put the contents into a folder and then zip that folder. The reason why is look what just happened here. I just got all these files that should not have been like this. Cause what if I had unzipped this and there was hundreds of files. So just a heads up, don't zip files like this. This is not the proper way. Is a very poor way to do it. Sorry to Lexicos if he's watching this video. But don't ever do that. Um, so yeah, this is how it should have appeared um, as a folder. So yeah, uh, it comes with a few different things. You know, we got the actual like stuff here, uh, 32, 64. Uh, you know, we got the license if you're bored and feel like reading through all this. Uh, I pretty much never do that, which is probably bad. Uh, Windows Spy, if you're, you know, got version one, you obviously know what that is. Uh, it's helpful for uh, getting stuff. I'm not going to do a video on that because, yeah, maybe in another one if it's uh, quite different. But obviously, we want the one that says install with the little gears. So we're going to click that. Oh, script not found. Hold on. Uh, oh. oh. That's why. I missed one of the files that was on my desktop, I guess. Let me make sure this one, that's something else. Okay. All right, now it should do good. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Make sure you put all the folders uh, where they are. Um, all in the same folder or same location, you know, if they're all on your desktop like they were originally. There we go. Much better. Learn from my mistakes, people. Uh, so, yeah, install two. You want to put it somewhere else? That's fine. I'm perfectly happy with program files, auto hotkeys. Obviously, you can push browse. 
you know, your normal explorer to find where you want to put it. Install mode. All users, current user. Well, I'm the only user on here, so it really doesn't matter for me. But it's up to you. Portable. Uh, that would be helpful if you're like in a work environment, depending on what you use. Uh, you might have to use this option. Right now it's grayed out. I don't know if it's because there's no reason for it or it's not available yet. Uh, I'm not really sure on that one, actually, uh, why that one's grayed out. But this would be more for like a work environment. There's uh, a lot of times when at your job, the security program that your company is using will block you from installing stuff. Well, if you use the portable version, it usually will bypass that and allow you to install anyway. That's what I actually have, have had to do uh, plenty of times in the past. So very simple, beautiful GUI. I mean, this honestly looks better than most of the... Uh, interfaces you see for install so i was very impressed with just how clean this looks so we're going to push install obviously we're going to get that are you sure do you trust this person uh yeah i hope so <laughs> as you saw that little button has now changed to the word installing and then this is really cool let me get rid of this we don't need that this is our little gooey here uh this is really cool uh so this is basically saying uh do we want to create a new script do we want to compile, you know, turn it into an executable? That way we can put it on other people's computers that do not have AHK installed at all. Help files, F1. F1 is pretty much normal for help files on any program. Windows Spy, that's the thing I was talking about. If you're familiar with version 1, you're going to like that. We'll run through these a little bit. Uh, launch settings and editor settings. So editor settings, um, I really don't want to launch in notepad why would i want that let's go with vs code instead so that setting has now been changed it should launch into vs code instead uh if you're coding notepad <laughs> i don't know what you're doing with your life uh launch settings you know there's going to be some stuff here once again very simple gui i mean i love this uh, auto detect version when launching script that is great I know a lot of people here are like, oh no, if I install version 2, all my version 1 code's going to break. No, it's not. You can have version 1 and version 2 installed in your computer. I do. Um, that way I can code. If someone gives me a script and it's version 1, I can still run it. If they give me a script in version 2, I can still run it. You do not need to redo all your code. If your code... Sure, if it's like 10 lines of code and you want to put it into version 2, go for it. But if you have a script that's thousands of lines of code, don't don't redo it. There's no purpose. You're just wasting your time. There, there's no purpose unless there's some type of functionality that's not in version 1 that you really want. You know, whatever. Uh, preferred interpreter by major version. You know, we're just doing basically whatever's in my system. Uh, Unicode 64-bit, 64 64-bit. 64 you can change it to 32 or ANSI 32. Uh, when detection fails, what do you want it to do? Just go ahead and use version 1? Do you want to go ahead and just use version 2? Or ask the user? I think you should just keep it as ask the user, to be honestly. Uh, try to identify version based on syntax. That's the best way, because that's honestly the best way it's going to know what it is. It's going to say, like, oh, this looks like version 2 code. Therefore, I'm going to launch in version 2. If it fails, obviously, you're going to get this ask the user thing. So for the most part, I think all the defaults that are in there, you should just leave as is. Windows Spy. This is what I was talking about. I'm not going to break this down, but I'll just show a quick uh, thing. As you see, uh, wherever my mouse is, it just gives me a crap load of information. You know, it's saying Auto Hotkey Version 2 Google Chrome. That's the page I'm on. Uh, you know, what's it class? It's Chrome, uh, Widget Win 1, Chrome EX. EXE, you know, it gets a bunch of like screen, window, mouse position information, controls that are under my mouse, uh, whatever you can. This is helpful when you're actually coding. So, you know, definitely keep this around and know how to get to that. Uh, help files, we're not going to go over that. Compile, we won't go over that. You know, that's just turned into executable. Uh, new script, you just click that. You know, what do you want to name it? We'll name it test for video. Where do you want it to save? Uh, documents, auto hockey file, fine, whatever. You know, do you want it to be empty, legacy, minimum for version 2? Basically saying like, hey, uh, this code has, this script has to run in at least version beta 6 or higher, you know. But we're just going to leave it as version 2. Run it however you want. 
which is probably a bad idea when it's in beta. <laughs> uh, edit or create, we're going to push create. And, uh, should have done something. What did I, did I miss something here? Maybe that's just uh, actually creating the file. I'm actually, I thought that was going to do something a little bit different. Where did I say documents, auto hockey? Ah, okay. So all it does is uh, create and then you can just open it like in Notepad++. Honestly, I, I don't see that feature being used very often because I can just come in Notepad++ and push new and start coding and then just save it as however. So that's a little weird. Uh, if you do have version 1 and version 2 installed on your computer, I do have a video where I explain on... Because the problem is that both versions, when you save the script, they're both .ahk. Uh, obviously, the detection can help with that. But if you want to do it manually and have an, actually add a new extension, so you could have like .ahk, that means run version 1, or .ahk2 run version 2. So if you want to have it so you can actually have an actual extension, just because honestly I like it that way better than the auto detection because then I can just look at a script on my desktop and be like, oh, the uh, extension says AHK2. I know it's AHK2 without me needing to look at it and like open the script and be like, uh, yeah, this looks like version 2. Honestly, I like doing it that way better. I'll put that in the description below in case you uh, want to create your own extension. Personally, I think it's the way to go. Um, but yeah, to each his own. If you guys like these videos, definitely uh, subscribe, hit that like button, bell notification, because I'm doing one, two, sometimes three videos every week. And just to throw it out there, in case you don't know, every Friday, unless it's like a holiday, uh, Joe Glines, another AHK guy, me, Jean, he's known for a QAP, quick access pop-up, and a few other very well-known people like Izaziel. Uh, Raptor X, uh, if you know him on the internet. Uh, we go live Friday, 11 EST time. Uh, I guess I said time technically twice there. Uh, just to basically help you out. It's basically just live support. We're on for uh, roughly an hour till about noon. We try to cut it off. And you just jump on Zoom. We're in the chat. We're live on our channels. We're live on Zoom. Just ask us a question and we'll try to run through your code or explain how the code's working, uh, pretty much anything that you have a question about. Just try to prepare for it, you know. If you sit there spending, you know, 20 minutes explaining your problem because you're not ready for uh, to be live, you know, it's not going to give us as much time to answer your question. So just kind of, you know, get in your head what you want to ask and how you want to ask it. You know, it's helpful for us, it's helpful for you and everybody else. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed this video, and see you on the next one.